Hello everyone. I wanted to work this problem from the chapter on quadratic equations and functions. This one's actually from section 8.4. It's number 18. It asks us to solve this formula for k. Now notice that k is very tightly bound in the numerator. And it's going to take some ingenuity and, and some hard work to isolate it. And I'm going to get after that in a moment. but. I wanted to uh, have some fun with this formula. The textbook says that it gives the number of diagonals of a k-sided polygon. So let's just flesh that out and um, just check out what it means exactly. Here is a very familiar polygon, a square, a four-sided figure. And I've drawn in, in red, the two possible diagonals. There's only two, and there they are. Now, what this formula says is that since we're dealing with a four-sided figure, k is four, and if I put four in here, it ought to generate the number of diagonals. In other words, n ought to evaluate to two. And what I've done here is I've gone to Wolfram Alpha, and as you can see, here is the top of the fraction, and I had to use parentheses to demark it. And here is the syntax I had to use to tell Wolfram Alpha to evaluate that expression to the left when k is equal to 4 for a uh, four-sided square. And as you can see, the result was 2. And there are, in fact, two diagonals. Now, wh what's interesting about this uh, formula is that, essentially, the, the dominant term up here is this k squared term. In the long, in the long range of things, k squared is going to dominate uh, the expression. Even though there's a subtraction here and a division, which tends to make things smaller, the k squared term will overcome those influences. It's the big dog on the block. And so, essentially, the uh, left side, which is a number of diagonals, is growing to the second power. In other words, it's increasing dramatically. And I thought it would be fun to uh, see that, visualize it, in terms of uh, a familiar polygon, the stop signs that we deal with every day. Here is uh, a regular octagon. And uh, check out the number of diagonals. As you can see, it's growing dramatically. And uh, we could count those, or we could use our formula here. And so let's go to uh, Wolfram Alpha. And instead of saying k is equal to 4 for a square, we'll say k is equal to 8 for an octagon. I hit Enter. and. Lo and behold, we're told there are 20 diagonals. So uh, that's kind of cool, and certainly it seems like uh, there are indeed 20 diagonals there. Um, now let me get at the problem per se, the uh, solution, solving this thing for k. And I'm going to go to my uh, drawing program for that. And my first move um, is I'm not going to do any false steps here, and it's very easy to uh, find yourself in a cul-de-sac. There's many, many uh, false paths here. I'm going to go straight to the solution, and essentially that involves uh, getting rid of the fraction over here. And to do that, I need to multiply the right side by 2, which means I have to multiply the left side by 2. Notice that the 2's cancel, and the fraction is gone. Now when I do a rewrite here, I'm going to rewrite uh, uh, right to left. and I'm also simultaneously going to subtract 2n from both sides. So I'm going to have here k squared minus 3k. And like I said, I'm going to subtract 2n from this side. And on the right-hand side, which was originally the left-hand side, I'm going to subtract 2n from this. And 2n minus 2n is 0. Now my reason for doing that is because you can clearly see that what we have here is a quadratic equation where the unknown is k instead of the uh, typical x. And there's essentially three ways to solve quadratics. You can you could crack this into two binomials and use the principle of zero products, but this doesn't crack. Or you could run the completing the square technique, or you could use a quadratic formula, which I'm sure you're all quite familiar with. I am going to use a quadratic formula and my my advice is always to go to the side of your paper and since the quadratic formula is written in terms of a, b's, and c's, I say you go to the side of your paper and create a little box that shows you what those a, b's, are and c's are. 
Now a is the coefficient in front of the unknown being squared. In this case it's one. And b is the coefficient in front of the unknown to the first power. In this case it's negative three. And c is everything that's here. And this is sort of a, a novelty. We've not seen very many c's that look like that. It's n being multiplied by negative two. But it's certainly a legitimate c. Now, I'm not going to drag in an image of the quadratic formula. Most of us have that memorized, and I'm going to simply fill from memory. The quadratic formula normally says x is equal to, but we're solving here for k, which is taking the place of x. And of course, that's what the problem asks us to do. So we have k is equal to, and we, the quadratic formula says take the opposite of b, the opposite of negative 3. And then it says you do this plus minus thing, and you have uh, a big radical that has b squared minus 4ac under it, which is called the discriminant. Okay, so we have b squared, which is negative 3 squared, minus 4 times a times c. Well, a is 1, and c is that strange negative 2n. And everything in the quadratic formula goes over 2 times a, which in this case is simply 2 times 1. Now basically we're looking at our answer right there. We've solved this thing for k. All we need to do is clean it up. The opposite of negative 3 is simply positive 3. I have a plus minus, but you know what? We are dealing here, since quadratics all have two solutions, we're dealing here with geometric figures that have a real positive number of sides and a real positive number of diagonals. We're never going to have to deal with that negative solution. So let's just get rid of it. And now we have our radical and the radicand. Negative 3 squared is 9. And then we have these three multiplications. If you do all this right here, what you get is a, a positive 8n. And notice I can't combine these like terms. There's nothing I can do here. We're pretty much stymied. Everything is over 2 times 1 or simply 2. And this is our answer. We have solved this problem for k. Now, what happens here is we feed in not the number of sides, but the number of diagonals a figure has. And it will generate the number of sides that figure has. So I thought it would be interesting to uh, check this out. We know that a regular octagon, a stop sign, has 20 diagonals. So if I put in 20 for uh, n here, the number of diagonals, I ought to get out uh, an, oct an octagon or 8. And so what I've done here is, um, once again, I've gone to Wolfram Alpha. And here you see it right here. Here's the formula for k. And here I put in uh, 20 diagonals, and I hit return, and sure enough, Wolfram Alpha tells me we're dealing with an eight-sided figure.